Director of the International Balkan University, dear Ambassador, dear Minister, dear Professors, dear students, colleagues, participants, and dear guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to welcome you to the Third International Student Congress 2016 entitled Contemporary Leadership, Challenges and Opportunities. Your presence here makes this ceremony even more special and unique. Having behind us two greatly successful student conferences from the last two years, as Faculty of Economics and Administrative Sciences, we are even more honored to announce that this year we have joined us by the Faculty of the Humanities and Social Sciences and the Faculty of Communication from International Balkan University to continue the tradition. The purpose of the Congress is to gather international and domestic students that are going to present and discuss the contemporary issues of today and share their researches and knowledge to a variety of topics that were offered by our three faculties. Okay, so I would now like to welcome our respected rector, Professor Dr. Ismail Koja Yusufoglu, to address us with his warm speech. Honorable Minister of State in the Government of Macedonia, dear valuable CEO of Halbank, Mr. Turhan Ademi, and the Director of Halbank in Charshi, and 
the director of the Sebra Cultural Center and their representatives of American Embassy. <coughs> My valuable academicians from International Banca University as well from other universities and my lovely, my dearest, my leaders of tomorrow, my youngest, my youth of students. I would like to welcome you all today to the opening ceremony of 13th International Student Congress. Here in Skopje, in the heart of Balkans, what we are saying, the beautiful city of the Balkans. It's my really honor, a privilege here, to address you for having this kind of great event at our university. In fact, it's not a long time. Just two years ago, this great event, this dream, came to my office. Two youngs, two youth like you guys, have come to my offices and said, the director, we have an idea. We would like to have at leaders of tomorrow joining here at Skopje International Balkan University and having the problems, discussing the problems of the, our world and then trying to find out the solutions for real daily issues that all people do need. Hans is speaking. Yes, I made this information last year, but this year is more important for me. I will explain why. And at the very beginning, I little doubt about them. Yes, I listened them carefully. I gave them attention. But in my mind, in my back ground of my mind, I was thinking, do you think that they will do this? Because from my experience of that age and from my academic career, I know how difficult to make an international conferences and congress and those kind. It is not that much simple. It's not gathering just friends. A lot of things needs to be done in that manner. I listened to them with a doubt. I said, okay, but are you sure that you will be able to do this? Okay, they said, director, if you give us a chance, we will prove you. So this movie has started from that point. And those two youngs are probably are still here. Right here I'm seeing one. He is the most crazy one. Always doing the things, new things and new things. Uh, our assistant and let's say coordinator on the media issues. Erdan Mishnah right here. I'm seeing him. He made this problematic cases for you guys, if you feel any kind of difficulty. <laughs> and Jenna Tetelak, I don't know where she is, she is also here, another crazy one. <laughs> yes, if, you, if, you, if you enjoy this meeting today or tomorrow, you must thank them, or if you have any kind of complaints, you must blame them, not me. <laughs> Secondly, it happened last year. Last year, also with a similar manners, but I had little doubt, of course. Not too much of scaries or whatever. I said, okay, okay, I know what you are going to do. Please go ahead and do it. But last year, and I must thank Fuad Kirkmas right here. He is our graduate, but he's also director right now in the seminar. Uh, surprisingly, now in downstairs, he told me, Professor, you have given an example last year about the mathematics issues and those. Are you still going to do this? No, I will not do that kind of detail. But I must say something. To say something is true, it's in mathematically true, it's in, in the world true, in the life true, it must be done at least three times. Another way to say this, we are checking if a theory is true or no. It's not guaranteed that it is true. You must do it at least three times. So this is now third Congress. I do strongly, surely believe from now on onto those youth right here, they are really the leaders of tomorrow. <laughs> and 
And I must not forget to thank today's leaders that brought this third term, third Congress, to be real for us. Those are even more, of course, having leading, uh, leading this Congress this year, Dukitsa Pavlovitsky. Paolo? Which? Which? Sorry, I mean, I will always have difficulties on the last name, but I will try my best. And is she here? Dukitsa? Okay. And... I must also thank as a Vice President of this Student Congress, she was a President as far as I know, and Doan Tahir. Adela Shavovic, I have seen her somewhere, yes, I know her. And then this is Shava, right there. Berkan Asanovsky. Igor Peikovsky. And as they are claiming, you will see them around, there are those female students. I made little touch on their words, but I don't mind. They are saying you will see us everywhere, so they will bother you for sure. Teodora Kostova. <laughs> Katrina Maksuti. <laughs> Merve Shemova. <laughs> Irma Muso Musovic. <laughs> and Belma Rajic. <laughs> so, again, my final words on this part is this. Whatever you like, appreciate them or don't beat them but whatever you would like to say they deserve to have this i also appreciate and i also personally thank to them and as a rector of international balkan university i'm so much proud to have such a young and talents among us dear guest of course those are not the only one i must appreciate they are. There are a lot, but also, mathematically right now I must use another word. This is unfortunately my brain is doing this. When I ask those youngs that they are making, I must add also this in parenthesis saying, I did not really pay attention this year. Believe me, I did not even pay one hour of this event happening. They all did by themselves and they made this great event to be real today. And I must also not, again, not forget, nothing less valid, those, this Congress would not even happen, of course, without others coming from not 23, it is written on the abstract book, but when I count it, I recognize that it's a 25 different countries. You know the mistake? Because they did not count themselves from Macedonia and from Turkey, they did not count on the main number, so they count the number from outside of the countries. So when I asked them how many countries you guys have, they told me 23. So when I was preparing, I just wanted to see the countries and I counted it's a 25. I will name them all. They are all the most valid people, students and youth and guaranteeing our future. Here they are. I'd like to welcome them and thank them and appreciate them for being here and for making this really great congress to be in the reality for him, for us. We have here students from Macedonia, from Turkey, from Kosovo, from Austria, from Poland, from Azerbaijan, Montenegro, Albania, Serbia, Italy, Russia, Sweden, Bulgaria, Liberia, Israel, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Ukraine, Czech Republic, Romania, Ghana, Taiwan, Pakistan, Uzbekistan, and Vietnam. I must really, really thank them a lot to be here today, and I will little more touch on this point. We do really need you all to be together all the time. And I do strongly believe this. My dear students, your presence right now here being today shows us, proves us that the distance are not 
obstacles for us to be together. There is no distance between our countries and our nations. There is no difference to be from different nations, to be from different religions. We are all united. We really do need each other, not only today, but also for tomorrow. If we recognize this reality, this world will get a lot better and to be peaceful and to live together. This is what you are doing, in fact, today being here with us. When I read, look, this topic of this uh, Congress has been chosen from the three faculties. I will come to that topic also. And a leadership. I have some other things inside, but a leadership. Yes, when I have seen from your abstracts, I have seen a real leadership inside of abstracts. I try to read them all. I don't have that kind of uh, huge memory I wish to have, not like Fuad, of course, but uh, I kind of get a copy. Although I do not like to have copy in the exams, I must take some copies from here. I do remember freshly some of them, but I like to use a opportunity to read it. I have seen the topics, there are some very, very important, actually maybe all of them are important. Some of them are touched me a lot. I'd like to share some of those abstracts with you guys. It is, one topic was, can leadership be taught? Uh, Aaron Corboy, if I'm not mispronouncing, he says from Liberia, he says, yes, it can be taught. I have in detail, but I will not spend my time. And Victoria Sarangova from Russia, she says, what is leadership? And who is the real leader? And I should not forget and skip these sentences I quoted from her. And this is an excellent sentence, really. If you want to change the world, this is what she says. If you want to change the world, you should start with yourself. So probably she meant from yourself, but I don't mind. I just kept the same words. Yes, this is totally, I must repeat these sentences again. If you want to change the world, you should start from yourself. This is really wonderful sentences and I will not forget it. Definitely, we must start from ourselves to make corrections or whatever. And Obenaba Kofi Agye from Ghana. He says, how one can be taught to be true leadership. So I can understand from the topics even how they are seriously prepared themselves to make this leadership to understand. And there is another topic, female versus male leadership. Of course, this will be hot discussion. I believe this. And already I have some signs inside of abstracts. Uh, please feel free to discuss everything. I don't mind. We don't mind. But I don't think we have differences on this manner. And Adea Hasi from Kosovo, she says, female can be thousands times better than male. And I do surely believe this. Don't worry, this is different. And Ariana Shala from Kosovo, Balan Madalina from Romania have discussed it and top and hot discussions inside of this topic. And another topic, leaders of today versus leaders of tomorrow. This is more important really for me. This must be really well done on this topic. Yes, you must take care of this, you must understand this topic. How was the leadership previously and how you should guys to be in the future, because there must be some changes. Alexandra Molchanova from Russia. She gives a lot of references on the leadership basis. How nice these references are. I don't have detail here, but a lot of books and leaders from the past. Uh, she says in the past, a leader was a person, usually, mainly, but now it's more like a group. So it is wonderful, really. It's wonderful to recognize, and you should, this you, this generation, and even in the future, 
any nation do understand this reality will make further development, I believe. And uh, she is giving one example, good example, at, on the teamwork and about the Singapore and so on and so on. And leadership, thinking big, oh, this is another topic, thinking big for gaining an edge in competition. There were a lot of discussion on this matter too. And Aneta Naumoska from Macedonia, and, oh, Aneta, uh, you're saying that you have an IOS for Macedonian and English language dictionary translation, translations on this language, I believe. I'd like to get that one for myself because I like to learn Macedonian. And another topic, leadership management, gender differences, cultural diversity and ethnics. And Ivar Dindo from Turkey, Kristina Lebedeva from Poland, and even more on this discussion. I don't want to really bother you too much on this detail. I did really love them all. Uh, okay, just one or two more, but I'm keeping my, the best one, of course, I will put on the final edge. Just one more. Future public relations in leadership. Katie Gipali from Albania. And Silvia also, Silvia Meto from Albania. Giving very important key points to be a leader. I like to get their advices, really. To be a real leader, uh, they have a lot of advices inside. And this is the topic. I shall not, and I cannot, I read it carefully. I definitely would like to see the detail inside, and I totally do agree. If there is an opinion about this abstract, my vote will go for this one, of course. Can, can a successful mother be considered a successful leader? This is, of course, yes. This is, of course, yes. And there is no leader in human being can be any mother. A Kyala Yaparova from Azerbaijan, she is discussing this topic and I appreciate again everybody, all topics, wonderful topics of discussion and I'm seeing from this topics even how our leaders are coming and growing nicely on the right manner. I do thank you all. my main part of talk and I will just close my talks of thanking uh, our ministry of the state are with us today a real example of leader in politicians of course leaders are not always on the politicians but we are expecting from the politicians a true person that we will definitely listen uh, proudly and I must also thank uh, our sponsors at the culture center from the Republic of Turkey to making this event really happen for us. They are supporting as an uh, platinum sponsors. And I wish to share with you their warm thanks and appreciation and success. They called me on the phone because of their busy times and they are not here with us. And the Tau Airport, they are always supporting our university for all kinds of youth activities. I must thank them all. And my final things, just to say, but I should probably skip this, uh, not to spend too much time. I think I made my main things to say to you guys. An International Balkan University, as an International Balkan University, not by myself, not only as a rector of International Balkan University, but I must also thank these three faculties and all my academicians. Those program is being planned by three faculties of our university. But we are here seven faculties with 23 undergrad and six graduate programs at International Balkan University. I must thank my deans, my colleagues, and more to my students, of course, uh, for making this event to happen at our university. Once more, I do strongly believe with you guys, please never forget to be together. We can do a lot for the world the most needed peace and understanding each other.
we are from different places, different countries, from different uh, nations, but we can see around, I don't want to use the name of blood or whatever, but the war is everywhere. The world needs more peace than any other time to solve these issues, to understand what's wrong and what is to be true in the future. This kind of gatherings, congresses, and a lot are more important. Please keep in touch. Please do understand and respect each other. Please make a better world for next generation coming after you, much better than what we have done by now. I thank you all very much. to our keynote speaker, Mr. Furkan Chakwa, <coughs> Minister of State in the Government of the Republic of Macedonia, to share with us his successful story and officially open the Third International Congress of the International Balkan University. that uh, confess that I am not sure whether I am the real leader uh, but I may convince you and assure you all of all of you are here that I won't uh, take your time too long. Director, Deputy Director of the Union Center Cultural Center, General Director of the Alt Bank in Skopje, members of the Diplomatic Corps in Macedonia, Hello, academicians, dear students, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure to join my colleagues in addressing this important international audience here in Skopje. Therefore, I would like to start by, first of all, welcoming you all to Macedonia and also to warmly congratulate Mr. Rector on organizing this timely and crucial international conference. Most of us who are here present know that for many years International Balkan University has made very important contributions to ongoing debates regarding the educational system in our country and therefore has made enormous positive contributions. We know that you are also building a unique campus of your university which soon we will also uh, have the chance to officially make the opening ceremony. Therefore, I use this opportunity to pledge the full support of my office and of my government in your endeavors. Dear Rector, dear guests, dear students, we are a generation of leaders of our countries and nations at a time when our country, our region, and globe in general is undergoing an important phase of adaptation to new realities, opportunities, and challenges. As both politician and as a private citizen, I always had a keen interest in the issues of our region, their focal place in our world affairs, and their prospects. I have also been keen in understanding the social changes, what their opportunities may be, and what, what kind of challenges there may become. Therefore, I do believe that this timely event will enable us to benefit a great deal from the valuable discussions which are going to be discussed and which are going to be related to global trends and leadership in general. 
and your particular interest today in debating the issues related to the topics, to touch to many various important topics on these fields, is most welcome. Dear guests, fellow students, uh, as a politician I have had the privilege of talking in numerous occasions to wide varieties of audiences. I have attended to many international conferences from Astana to Washington, from uh, Sarajevo to Bratislava, from Copenhagen to Skopje. But honestly speaking, this is one of the most challenging sphere for me because talking to the upcoming owners of the world demands me to double think about the world. But while double thinking, I won't act as the diplomats are acting because in diplomacy, you know, there, are, there is a say, the diplomats think twice, but at the end they say nothing. I am going to uh, tell you today something at least. Hence, I would indeed like to thank you for inviting me again to this occasion because having a chance to influence the views and perceptions of the upcoming generations is more important than anything for my human responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, dear students, you know, everyone has colors in their lives. With honesty in my heart, I would like to share, my, share the colors of my story with you. As many of us keep hearing on TVs, sports coaches usually talk about the importance of youth and the experience and the glory that it could bring to individual performances. The rationale, the rationale behind this logic is that the hard work and the energy sparked by the youth age, an experience that sets the rational level behind, are the absolute future features which actually helps us go further in both as private and public individuals. It has been the same for me so far. I have all, always craved for retaining my energy in developing a state order which will benefit all of our fellow citizens without considering their ethnic or religious background and make their lives better off in every aspect, be it in economic, in political, as well as social sphere. It has been this vision that has guided me in the manner of fighting for liberty and equality in our lives. My belief has been inspired by my family's life and personal background of having lived in and educated in different parts of the Balkan countries, such as in Croatia, in Slovenia, in Turkey and in Slovakia. In these environments, I happen to enhance my personal horizon by noticing that we are actually living in one small global village where we are all sharing the same joy and sadness. Few years ago, a psychologist, Paul Ekman, traveled all around the world with an aim to explore how each individual shapes his or her face in certain emotions. His findings demonstrated that in joy, our love is the same as the people in different continents. Or in sadness, we have the same craving for resurrection. His, finding, his findings told me one another fact, that we are all the same creeds, and in order to retain this equality, we need to unite in one goal, saving and progressing our life qualities constantly. This belief made me grow as an open-minded politician, where I fight for the value of liberty and equality for all of us. However, colors are not strong enough if you cannot add assets to it. Here, hard work is the real asset because time is the only capital we have in our world, and it is usually more valuable when we increase the working margins of it. In my educational life, I happen to meet more people 
and to travel around continents with an aim to learn and improve myself. One of the interests during my life which I, I was paying special attention was the languages. I have given really very special interest to the languages. So speaking Macedonian gave us opportunity to understand Serbo-Croatian. Once I got the opportunity to learn those languages and thanks to the part of my life that I spent in Slovakia, I learned Slovakian. The ones who speak Slovakian can also get adapted to Czech language. The ones who speak Czechoslovakian can easily understand the Polish language. And when you combine all of this, all of these languages, you end up with speaking the Russian language. <laughs> so I had the opportunity to combine all of them. And today, be it as a minister in the government or as uh, someone who is representing my ethnicity, Turkish ethnicity in Macedonia, I have the privilege to speak all those languages. And of course, I was paying attention to speak, to try to speak English languages, language, which I do still uh, try hard to, to learn more better and more better. And you know, the scope of work actually got me into a lot of complexities. Because the more I learned, the more I developed questions and craved for answers. However, the balance was again reshaped by reading and traveling more and more in order to get enlightened for the complexities I was dealing with. Here, I worked on doing numerous internships and work placements in different parts of the world. While I was a student in Slovakia doing my MA, MA, Master of Arts, in International Relations and Diplomacy, I attended to internship uh, in our embassy in Copenhagen. So being there, I had the opportunity to figure out how the Scandinavian people are thinking and what are their visions and how they are forming their plans and their visions. So all those things gave me a real opportunity to figure out some other things. And I did all those things with an aim to improve the knowledge I had and explore how practices, how practices are being delivered in different parts. It worked really well because I believe to be growing as an inspiring professional. I was fortunate to be one of the youngest ministers of this new country. The year when I became the minister was 29. It was very challenging, but also I had to use the opportunity because you know me, especially in, polit in po politics, the chance which you are given is once. So whether you use it or you say goodbye and there is not another chance. So thanks also to the friends, to the experienced people, to their help and of course to your support. I try to act as a minister and actually do my best in uh, bringing especially foreign investments to my country so that to make and create better conditions for all of us living here. So I was, the, I was fortunate to be one of the youngest ministers of this new country, delivering solutions to our foreign direct investments clauses, an area which is quite crucial for our economic development. I feel the responsibility of it and the demands that I daily face. It is not an easy task and I never see this as an end destination. But rather, this is a position which actually gives me the privilege to share and fight for the values I have developed in my life, equality, 
and liberty for all our fellow citizens. Assets which I believe will make the lives of each individual better off and of course will create better conditions for the Macedonian future. Dear friends, my story has two colors. But behind the curtains, I have always tried to strengthen it with the hard, hard work and learning. If I was in the position of giving you an advice for your future careers, this is the, things, the thing which I don't believe that I am maybe the real role model, but I will try to do. I would say that please fight for your life principles and in order to stay strong against the storm, storms that could really challenge them, work harder and improve yourselves. Remember, no matter where you come from, your dreams and visions are relevant. Just have courage to fight for them and grow stronger characters and intellectual levels in order to withstand the storms that your journey, journey might face. Those are the things in general which I can uh, share with you today. And what are the things which I have learned uh, acting concretely as a minister or uh, in, uh, actively as a politician are three things. Which, which I have learned during my experience. That is political maturity, emotional maturity, and leadership authority. Political maturity is about the experience which is gained from the meetings, from different travels, from different conferences, from witnessing different speeches, and so on. So, the more you travel, the more you attend to meetings, the more you add something during those visits, I believe that politically you are getting more mature and you gain the political maturity. And when it comes to emotional maturity, I believe that this is a thing which is needed to be considered in your uh, daily interactions with the people. So, the more you meet people, the more you understand that you don't have, in politics I mean, you don't have to have uh, emotions. Because once you cover up yourself with the emotions, uh, I believe that you won't end good in your career. So. The, the result of the emotional maturity so far uh, can be translated as trust no one in politics. Or you have to be careful. And when it comes to leadership authority, once you have the political maturity and then you add to it emotional maturity, you are being considered as a leader and you are the one who have the authority to make the discussions, to be taken into consideration and to decide something about your nation, about your plans, about your programs. But also when you get to that level, you have to be sure that you have to be sure that you have to walk, walk alone. Because many who start walking with you won't finish with you at the end. So you have to care about this thing uh, as well. I would like to end maybe with three uh, citations, quotations at the end. One of them is the quote from Ali Ezer Begovic, the other one from Henry Kissinger, and the last one from Alexander Dubček. In one of his writings, in memoirs, Ali Ezer Begovic has said that in his life, in his, during his life, 
he has worked in many positions. As a private citizen, he has worked in construction companies, he has dealt with ordinary things during his life. During his professional life, he has been working in courts, representing some people in courts. But the, the, hardest, the hardest, hardest thing which he has done in his life has been the negotiations. Because negotiating means to decide. So when it comes to decide, when it comes to decide about your nation, your country, it is really hard to act as if you are acting privately or ordinarily in your, in your life. And he says that he is not sure whether he has decided properly or not, but he is sure that he has done the most, uh, the best thing up to his knowledge to that time. So I do believe that considering the future of my Turkish national minority in Macedonia, I'm not sure about in the future when we are going to decide something, whether we are going to decide good or not, properly or not, but we are sure that we will do our best when negotiating and deciding to decide with the knowledge which we have to our best up to that date. And Henry Kissinger, in one of his memoirs and writings, says that there are two different, you have to differentiate two things. One, when you are academician, and one, the other one, when you are statesman. statesman. When you are academician, and when you are writing articles about some issue in politics, you have a time and opportunity if you make a mistake, to rewrite or to change your theory and make discussions about it. But once you are becoming a leader and you have to decide, you have only one chance. So when you, when you decide about something, you have to be very careful to consider everything because there may be not uh, returning back. So when we plan our things, me personally and our friends, we do all, always keep in mind uh, this important finding and this important message. And lastly, uh, whatever you do in, in your life, you know, you do it with, and with a hope. You are hoping for something and that's why you are acting or doing. And uh, maybe at the end, you cannot get the result what you want. Maybe you cannot get 100% for sure. But at least you have a hope. And Alexander Dubček has said in Slovakian, he says, Nade zomiera posledne. It means the hope dies last. So we hope that we will have better future as a new generation. For sure, better conditions for all of us, our people. And of course, we will do our best in our part from Macedonia to make the better conditions for our region and of course for the developments in the world. So those would be the things shortly uh, which I can share with you today. I would like to thank you for uh, being here present, for your presence. I hope the ones who came from uh, abroad will enjoy our beautiful country and beautiful capital and for the ones who are from Macedonia I believe that you will be the best hosts and you will do your best to show the positive examples of our country. Thank you very much again for your support. someone has uh, questions, I may answer. If not, I may take a seat. This is there's no one who wants to ask something. I'm willing to open the floor for two or three participants. 
who would like to share their feelings with us. Okay, if there's no one, we may proceed. And now in the end, we would like as a university to think, okay? Uh, hello to everybody. I'm glad to be again in Skopje for my second time and I'm much more satisfied and uh, much more pleasure in my heart that I'm seeing here much more people than the last time. It means that Ibu Congress is getting more and more progressive. Uh, you have the greetings from Kosovo and from our homes, from our families, uh, because we're like in a big, in a big um, city, not uh, like in a big world, but like in a big city. The world is getting smaller and smaller, and here are people from more than 20 countries, which means that we are getting more than brotherhood. Uh, and last, in previous Congress, it was such a great experience to be in Skopje and present my paper in front of a great audience. Uh, I don't think that it would be worse audience this time, but I am sure that it will be much better audience than last time. I want to share another single thing with you. Uh, in May, we hosted a conference in Pristina, which was kind of inspiration from the Ibu Congress in Macedonia. It came, it came uh, like a light in our hearts and in our minds, so uh, we share and we put all our knowledge and our small experience like students to organize a conference in the capital of Kosovo where around 40 participants from more than 23 countries around the world attended our conference and it means that through such great international events people can get uh, closer and closer to each other and can share experiences and can uh, do the best thing that somebody can do to somebody else to inspire him or her to make and share experiences to uh, his mates around the world. So thank you again and I wish that Ipu Congress will not stop in the third uh, edition of it. Thank you again for your time. like to, to thank the sponsors for the contribution, Atatur Culture Center, USCO Foundation, and Tough Airports. I now like you to invite to join us for a coffee in the lobby.